does the Bible teach that the earth is flat? And what does science have to say about it? Uh, believe it or not, there is a movement within Christianity that uh, seems to be suggesting, they're teaching that the earth is actually a flat disk and that somehow uh, through uh, conspiracy and just uh, science being confused, we've missed this all along. Uh, never mind the fact that we've been to space, uh, never mind so many different things. Uh, this movement is teaching this. Now, there is a lot of conspiracy that comes out of this movement, some, some uh, uh, tinfoil hattery, if you will. You know, when I first started hearing about this, I always thought it was a myth that anyone believes in a flat earth today. And I thought it was sort of a joke when people brought it up. But uh, it turns out that some people apparently actually believe that, that the earth is, is, is flat and that, uh, you know, all the evidence to the contrary is just sort of a gigantic conspiracy theory and so on. And, and, and because it's it's gaining traction and because, sadly, it's, it's mostly Christians who are, are falling for this, I felt, you know, it's probably time that we we deal with this issue because you see if somebody professes to be a christian but they also claim something that is demonstrably false that really tarnishes the name of christianity and i think that this can be uh, i think that this can actually add to the offense of the gospel the gospel is offensive enough by itself and uh, it's it's offensive in a, in a proper way because we're sinners but we don't want to add to that offense by uh, believing in things that are flaky, things that are not in Scripture, things that are not backed up by good science. Excuse me, Dr. Lyle. I have a few questions. Are we really expected to defer to your scientific expertise because you hold such an impressive number of degrees and PhDs in astronomy and physics? If someone else holds degrees or PhDs in fields like Darwinian or cosmic evolution, should their advanced scholarship suffice to elevate their lofty expertise on those subjects over our own humble perspectives? And why is it that creationists are able to identify the blatant bias of an academic evolutionist, yet when it comes to your own education based entirely upon heliocentric paradigms and the realm of theoretical physics? We're not supposed to recognize this as being just as thoroughly biased, whereas you honestly have more to lose if heliocentricism was proven false than almost anyone. And isn't the topic of evolution versus creation absolutely crucial to this whole question of biblical cosmology anyways? Since it forces us as Christians to admit that at least in, in that arena, we already maintain that virtually the entire mainstream scientific community has, quote, somehow, either through conspiracy or science just being confused, the world has missed it, and missed it big time. Regarding evolution, don't we as creationists already affirm that indeed the alleged objectivity of the scientific method can be quite easily superseded by man's eternal fallen drive to be the master of his own destiny and the god of his own fate? Don't we already affirm that in evolutionary theory there exists both massive pseudoscientific delusion and even outright fraud? Do you really suppose that the rest of the world does not already regard such a suggestion as unpalatable tinfoil hattery? So how does that work exactly? How do you manage to maintain the level of cognitive dissonance? And with such a level of bravado and hubris? How can you accuse others of tarnishing the gospel or adding to the offense of the gospel? If you yourself are not prepared to examine the possibility that the entire foundation of your own life's work, the entire heliocentric universe model, is itself actually the indispensable groundwork for all branches of evolutionary theory in the first place. As an expert in things like modern astrophysics, surely you of all people understand how the scientific community sees Big Bang cosmology as being absolutely inseparable from astronomical research. 
Surely you comprehend that things like gravity are maintained as being the underlying physical law which gradually caused all the stars and planets and moons to supposedly form over millions and billions of years. Yet somehow you believe you can divorce gravitational theory from its evolutionary implications. In this exercise of academic schizophrenia, on the one hand pointing to the physicists and astronomers and cosmologists when they arrogantly assist that gravity and orbital mechanics and dark matter and everything else that are so obviously and demonstrably true. But then you can simultaneously turn around and push away those same experts when it comes to their just as arrogantly made claims about the ages and timelines of all those heavenly bodies and their physical processes. How is it that you can approach your fellow scientists and academics who hold to the theory of evolution, who have even built their entire careers on the linchpin of its validity, and challenge them to question it all, to risk everything, by daring to ask if it all might in fact be one massive fraudulent lie? How can you now continue to challenge the evolutionist, with true intellectual honesty, if you yourself are actually now in the very same position, yet refusing to give serious consideration to a contrary scientific claim, which if true, would obliterate your own entire career. Do you really not see the irony, not see the glaring parallels? I wonder, do you find it offensive to hear the suggestion that the Apollo missions were every bit as much of a fraud and a hoax as the Piltdown Man? Why is that? Do you really dare smirk at the idea of conspiracy? I don't know what all you get from the Bible's overall scope, but when I read the Bible, I read an awful lot in there talking about this adversary character. And yes, while undoubtedly the scriptures employ a good amount of symbolism at various points and in various ways, I think we would both agree that if everything in the Bible is permitted to be reduced down to nothing more than symbolic imagery or language for something else, then ultimately your Bible isn't good for much more than tossing it on the fire. So how much of the word is truly using symbolism to describe spiritual things beyond our limited comprehension? And how much of the time are we ourselves appealing to this excuse of allegory, when it is merely because the straightforward reading of the text flies in the face of modern scientific consensus? Where are those subtle lines drawn exactly, between honestly caring first and foremost about protecting the reputation of Jesus and the Gospel? and simply trying to preserve our own standing and prestige according to the standards of a fallen world. Do we dare take seriously what the Bible says about being willing to appear foolish according to the wisdom of this world? And how far are we willing to take that? How foolish are we willing to be? Only in matters of religious doctrine and theology? Or in everything? As I said, clearly that's not the case when it comes to evolution. There we stand upon the plain and simple words of Genesis and know that the supposed millions and billions of years of cosmic history are nothing but outright satanic lies. Yet the possibility that the millions and billions of light years and distance across the universe might also be just as much of a satanic lie? This you mock and scorn and deride because you are afraid it would make the gospel of Christ even more of an offense?
I hate to tell you this, but if your concept of the gospel is one that seeks to validate itself by being aligned with the humanistic knowledge of this worldly system as much as possible, then I'm afraid that such a gospel isn't going to be worth anything to anyone in the end. Such a gospel has no power. has absolutely no concept of the complete rift between the kingdom of God and the kingdoms of this world, which are coming to nothing. Do you truly understand this rift which the Bible talks about from cover to cover? This irreconcilable chasm between the true bread of Christ and those chasing the vanities of human knowledge? Or like so many others, have you embraced this common mindset which dominates cultural Christianity, which imagines that institutional Christian religion and Western culture have together been the driving force behind the majority of progression of the sciences and the arts, technologies, and political ideology? Do you scoff at conspiracy because, like the majority, you are somehow oblivious to who the god of this entire worldly system actually is? For me, what has been most compelling about this entire flat earth awakening is not even the issue of the shape of the earth itself, or the nature of the heavens, or the many questions of scientific deception and hoaxes or delusional pseudoscientific theorizing and all the rest. No, the most fascinating aspect of it all is actually how it puts its finger right on this very question of just how willing we really are as Christians to be mocked, to be considered fools, to be a laughing stock and called crazy by the rest of the unbelieving populace. It is an astounding litmus test indeed. And not only this, it actually exposes how for a long time so much of what has gone on in the name of apologetics, in the name of seeking to prove the credibility of the gospel to the rest of the world, has sadly in a lot of cases actually been more about proving our own personal credibility to the world. <laughs>